This is Sam Bushman and Daniel Morrison for Candid Gaming's review of Greed Corpse for the PlayStation Network. In the past couple years, we've seen a couple different attempts at bringing the strategy genre to the home console market. Oftentimes, however, these games were plagued by oversimplistic mechanics and poor execution. Greek Corpse attempts to bridge this by using a very small subset of game mechanics that have both positive and negative trade-offs that give it a little more depth, that create a little more thought in both players when they're attempting to play. And this is what I think is the first really good point of the game. They give you this very small subset of mechanics. You could either move your player to adjacent tiles, set up cannons, set up a base to make more units, or fly your units to a faraway space. That was it. It became something that was extremely easy to pick up and work. Yeah, the first I looked at this game, I was very disappointed. I was like, is there only five units? There's no tiers? It's like, I'm used to tech trees and stuff. You kind of go into the StarCraft camping. Then you get to this and it's like, there's only five units in this game. But then you start looking at how these units are put into the game, and it's just amazing how complex each unit is. I know, it was really interesting to be able to start playing with a friend, they start picking it up, learning it, understanding, okay, a cannon can shoot things, the base can go ahead and multiply my units, but then you work in the fact that things like harvesters, which are units that you can play on a tile and start getting resources, will destroy your land. And this has a negative feedback that you have less land to be able to take care of, so enemies are more likely to take over all your territory and kill you. But at the same time, you need resources to build more units. And this applied to every mechanic. The flying units were very expensive, the cost of producing more individual walker units for yourself, while cheap in small amounts, ultimately made for a lot of micromanagement. Not only that, harvesters had offensive capabilities as well, which was really funny to go ahead and do, is just go into the guy's base, put the harvester, his base will be floored in about three moves, guaranteed. Yeah, and that gave this kind of really wacky feel, is that you can essentially screw over your partner, slam the harvester, and all of a sudden they've got to face this thing for the remainder of the match. And that wackiness also played in well with the visual aesthetic. It was a very light-hearted, welcoming feeling. You had these very cartoony, steampunky characters that you could attach yourself to. It's like watching cartoons bashing each other on the head. Yeah, it was a very cute, interesting art style that you don't see very often. And combined with the very nice, rapid load times, it just kept coming. You could go and get into the board, you're onto the field, you're playing. There's no like really kind of long hangs on it, you're not waiting at a load screen, which really is annoying for some, some games. And you just get right into it, and then you're there. Yeah. I can't, you know, as much as I give credit to the mechanics, one thing that kind of bothered me about it, however, was the fact that with so few mechanics, you play the game for hours and hours, and once you learn the mechanics, there's nothing new to be revealed to you. You knew, understood the mechanics, you understood the pros and cons, and while it made matches interesting with humans, especially if you're facing computers, you kind of knew how the match was going to go. Now, with the computers, I do agree that it does get a little bit stale because computers only have a finite amount of moves. But the game really has an amazing amount of depth to go ahead and play with players. There are just so many ways to go ahead and fight on the battlefield. The field is basically shaped literally by how you move. And it's just amazing. Like, I really enjoy smashing. It is just so fun to watch them destroy everything on there. I suppose that's true, but I'd still like to see if they could expand the game model a little bit. Maybe add a couple more different kinds of units, different kinds of races. At least have the different races do something different. They look different, but it doesn't expand much beyond that. Yeah, and on that point, the story doesn't really have much of a story. You have these very different cultures, but they all interact with the environment the same, which is great for balance. It's a very balanced game. It really feels like a chess game almost. You really get in there but there's not much of a story on the background of these people. It's kind of like a text blurb for the campaign, and it's fun to play through, but it's not going to go ahead and get you really into this world, which you could tell has a huge amount of potential if you look like the concept drawings and just how it overall is laid out. You know, I think that's what the game overall really screamed was. We went for the mechanics first, we developed this interesting world, but we just didn't have a chance to implement it all. Because along with having these different races with the shallow story, you also had the environments that didn't really stand out. You had a couple different sprite sets for each tile, and the outdoors, while respectfully were very low in detail to allow you to focus on the game itself, didn't offer anything different in terms of visuals. The world looked kind of plain, the units, while looked differently, didn't act differently, and the, like you said, the story didn't add a whole lot. So I think this kind of says something. If they would have been given maybe a couple more months, maybe the game could have produced this really interesting world on top of nice mechanics. 
Another small shortcoming this game had that I noticed when playing through the single player was how the computer opponent AI acted. I found that more often than not, when I was in a match, it felt like all the other computer opponents were against me as opposed to facing each other. I approached each map assuming it would be a free-for-all, since these are all rival factions, but it seemed like all their moves were working together to isolate themselves and put me in a bad position. I kind of disagree with this. It felt that no matter how you're playing, you're going to be the one that's going to be left out of the game. You're always going to be the last one out. It's just that you have to take out all as much ground as you can, basically just plow out the areas and you just isolate yourself. I think it's more of just how you perceive it. I don't think it's more of just them going after you. I'm not so sure, because often you'd see units that had maybe one or two tiles that weren't very well reinforced, and to me it looked like prime pickings for taken out. And I had a lot more land and I was a little better reinforced, so instead of taking out the weak player and getting them out of the way, they'd attack me and the weak player would end up strengthening himself and becoming a very small isolated turtle. And there just wasn't a lot to do about it. It just felt unfair to me. I was finding the opposite on it. I was finding that usually the opponents would take themselves out and I'd be left with one very weak opponent that's been weakened by the other two factions in many cases. And that's where it gets really tense, just getting down to that last guy. I, I agree. That is, the 1v1 really seemed to be where things take off in this game in general. Because at that point, you don't have to spread your focus too much, and you see the common conflict of the guy with a lot of land and a lot of places to go, and the guy who's turtled on a couple pieces of tile. While he has a lot of strength and can just pummel you with bullets, at any moment you can get a single flying unit and take him out. It really made this rock, paper, scissors sort of mechanic. Yeah, and everything takes effect next turn, so you could always see anything coming at you. And that really kind of adds to it that you know that there are three openings. Which opening are they going to take? They're going to take that base, this base, or are they going to just demolition this one? They can yeah. do anything, and you don't know what to do. I'd say, it, overall, that kind of stringence really made it so you couldn't afford to make mistakes. But I think, really, the mechanics were dead on in this game. You can't really stress this enough. It really is a dead-on mechanic of the game. It doesn't matter how it looks. It just plays perfect. It is just so fun to play. And that's the one thing that really keeps it going. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think at the end of the day, like I said, that's what it is. They made this game all about the mechanics. And put it, I think I really added value to the game. This game being priced at $10, I thought was a steal. I definitely agree. It is definitely probably worth, like, I've probably spent like more on some cheap, really crappy games on the handheld that didn't have as nice of gameplay. Yeah. I would definitely give this game at least $20, because to me, look at most handhelds like you were saying, they're worth about $20, and this gave me at least that. But I also know that playing online, playing with friends locally, I'm going to get more out of it. Definitely. I thought, it feels like it's a $15 game. It's got a great amount of boards, it's got a local multiplayer, an online multiplayer, it's got a pretty lengthy campaign for you, and it's a very nice game, especially for a $10 I'd say definitely for a choice if you want to look for a casual strategy game that introduces itself to the home console that you know both casual and hardcore strategy guys want to get into, Green Corps is perfect for that. Yeah, I would agree so. I think that's all we have to say. Um, post comments at the bottom of the page and we'll be back with some other game. Take care.